Uh, yeah, I hope that you're hearing me. Uh-huh. This is the future, all about cybersecurity. Talking about the hackers, I'm just trying to warn you. From the one and only legend, the cyber informer. Hey, yeah, yeah, this is the cyber reformer. Uh, this is the cyber reformer. Let's go. It's time for the Cybersecurity Business Connect and Protect Central Coast Q&A video. I am Michael Trimblett, the Cyber Informer, at Cyber underscore Informer on Twitter. Today, I'll be answering the question, how do I use multi-factor authentication without a phone? To answer this, I'll introduce you to a smart card technology called YubiKey. In this video, we'll look at the YubiKey, the security benefits, and some of the use cases for it. Let's go. A YubiKey is a hardware smart card. They come in USB-A, USB-C, Lightning keychain, and nano form factors. A number of these keys support biometrics and near field communication, or NFC, like the technology you use for tap and pay on your phone or credit card. Which key do I need? You can take the quiz at the website on the screen to determine which key you need. The universal key currently is the 5 series, which retails for about 75 Australian dollars. There are a number of different configuration use cases for YubiKeys. We will be exploring four of them in the coming weeks. These configurations include logging onto your standalone workstation, your computer connected to a domain, your Microsoft 365 account, and a Mac. YubiKey is supported by a range of online services. Different keys support different services, so it's important to work out which key you need before buying. These logos are a small number of supported web applications that support YubiKeys. There are some services in there that we have discussed in previous videos. The way it makes you more secure depends on what you use it for. The supported security protocols are one-time passcodes, FIDO U2F and FIDO2, PIV and OpenPGP. The following videos in the series will cover FIDO2 and PIV implementations. All of these security protocols are tried and tested and known to be absolutely secure. YubiKey's implementation of these protocols have been tested and verified by independent third parties. It creates two-factor authentication for any login. It requires something you know, your PIN, and something you have, your YubiKey. But practically, how does it work? Typically, the login process is visit a website, enter either your username or select smart card login, insert the YubiKey when prompted, enter your YubiKey PIN, touch the YubiKey. Touching the YubiKey tells the system that there is a human there, it's not a fingerprint reader. This prevents malware masquerading as your key, which is a smart inclusion to increase security. This process will log you in. Notice we didn't enter a password, just a PIN. It really is as simple as these steps. YubiKey Manager interfaces with the YubiKey to configure it. This gives administrators control of what's on the key and what's not. It allows you to manage the different supported protocols. One-time passwords, FIDO2 and PIV configurations are all managed from this software. In the video series, we will see FIDO2 and PIV protocols used. Pin configuration and factory reset the key is all done from the YubiKey Manager. You can also turn protocols on and off should you want finer control over the key. YubiKey Manager can configure a long press. Pressing the key for three to five seconds outputs the password. For example, should you have a very long password to access your password manager, you can enter it in as a static password. In the long touch slot, enter a static password, press and hold the key for three to five seconds, and it will type it in. Really handy for those services that don't support YubiKey, and you have a complex password you need to enter. You can also use your Android or iPhone with the NFC model of the YubiKey. For one-time passwords, YubiKey can unlock your Authenticator app on your phone. You can even configure each individual code to require a key tap too. We'll have a look at how this works on the following slides. Open the YubiKey app, which asks you to tap or insert your YubiKey. Tap the key on the back of the phone where the NFC interface is. The app uncovers the saved one-time password generator, but we're not done. Each one-time password saved has the option to require a second tap to reveal the current one-time password. Tapping the circular refresh button on the right of the code prompts you to tap or insert your YubiKey. Tap the key on the back of the phone to reveal the code. This is arguably more secure than using a fingerprint, as fingerprints are known to be susceptible to false positives as well as false negatives. False positives or false acceptance rates, covered in the physical security video, are historically high with fingerprint readers. There was a time that if you passed your phone around at a party and asked everyone to try all 10 fingerprints to unlock your phone, the chances were good that someone who was not you could unlock your phone. 
With this YubiKey technology, that is no longer a problem. There are no false acceptance rates with the YubiKey. It's either the correct key or it isn't. There are a number of gotchas when implementing YubiKeys. The most notable one is if you lose a key. YubiKey recommends having two identically configured keys for this reason. One you use, the other is in storage just in case. Leaving legacy logon methods enabled means that you may as well not have a key. If you are concerned that you will lose a key so you keep your password prompt enabled as well as using the YubiKey means hackers will not need the key to hack your account either, so it becomes useless. If the key is lost, then admins can reset the key status on your account. However, if you have to deal with a faceless organization by messages being sent back and forth, <coughs> Facebook, <coughs> it can take time to re-establish your account. But if your server or Microsoft 365 account is managed by your IT provider, they can put in temporary measures to allow you to access your account without too much fuss. Another way to recover your account is to generate your recovery code when initially setting up your account. You will be able to log in to the account to make changes to the configuration with this key. It is generally a 64 character random key, so it is unhackable. But you also don't want to be entering it in too often. Only in a pinch. I recommend storing it in your password manager or writing it down and storing it in your safe. Do things in the right order or you may lock yourself out for good. This refers to workstations and Macs. Some settings can only be changed when logged in and if you do things in the wrong order, it may mean you lock yourself out and a factory reset may be your only recourse. So we need to be careful when setting up YubiKey to follow the right steps in the right order. What do we learn? YubiKey can add bulletproof security to many types of accounts. You can leave security holes if you don't disable legacy authentication. Losing YubiKey can cause headaches. Once set up, it couldn't be easier to use. Plug in, pin, touch. YubiKey can output a saved long password, perfect for unlocking password managers. One-time password generators can be secured with YubiKey through NFC. Not everything is compatible, but the compatibility list is growing. Thank you for joining me for a look at YubiKeys. These days, having a password alone to protect your account is becoming antiquated. You need multi-factor authentication, preferably passwordless authentication. YubiKey gives this to you in a simple to use USB hardware key. If security is a priority for you, you'll want this device. Don't forget, you can contact me via email, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Also, check out the podcast at loyalit.com.au slash podcast. Until next time, stay safe online. Oh yeah, this is the Cyber Reformer. Hackers, you're going down like, oh yeah. This is the Cyber Reformer. Hackers, you're going down, yeah.